happy Saturday, everybody. Um, oh, happy Saturday. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing all right. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm excited to get into this uh, conversation. You're going to break out your robot voice just for this one? I am very happy to get into this conversation. <laughs> I don't know where the button is straight <laughs> off on the thing. Yes, this is Kieran White here, not Stephen Hawking. So uh, it's... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness welcome in everybody to the first uh it's the first side chat saturday of 2024 uh apologies wow. for it being a delayed start because usually i do these once a month ah hello sarah it is good to see sarah's you. in the house uh hello esteban, esteban. folks trickle in um glad to have you all with us tonight um but yeah so apologies for that to those who are who've uh, been watchers before. Yes, 2024 had a rocky start for me, so I've only just <laughs> only just now getting back around to doing side chat Saturdays. But I've got a nice list of folks I'm going to reach out to, like David Haskell, who's doing uh, lots of DEI research, actually, which ought to be interesting. And, uh, uh, oh, good. Good grief. I can't remember his name. Deb, Deb would shoot me because it's one of hers. Um <laughs> I have his Wait. name in a list somewhere, but I also want to talk to Corey Clark, who wrote the censorship and science paper, which is really going to be mm. uh, really interesting to see her thoughts. But welcome in. Um, I'm happy to have back, as you can already tell, uh, Kieran White, friend of the channel, founder of Woke Screen, and the host of the Crowdsource podcast. Um, and so well, you've been getting you. into AI. I've been yes. getting into AI. We're going to have a talk about AI. <laughs> I'm 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 very excited and. <clears throat> overly passionate to my detriment sometimes of AI because I just want to EMP the lot of it. But um, <laughs> but we'll uh, you know we'll try and we'll try I'll try and be measured here. But uh, you know there's going to be a, a big dose of opinion on this. But founded in founded in fact. But I must say I'm I'm honoured to be the first of 2024. So thank you very much for having having me back. So uh, yeah. All righty get into it so if you have questions feel free to ask away um and put your questions in the chat of course um house rules though of course engage in conversation agree and disagree and all that jazz but uh please mind your manners and don't get into vulgarities and nastiness because i do reserve the right to boot your ass if you do that so <laughs> it's going to be rules going forward for the chat by the way um <clears throat> So first things first, uh, I, we figured we might talk with a little bit of a history lesson because AI has gotten uh, remarkably lots of coverage in every bit of news and goodness knows what for a very long time. And it is um, not as young as people want to think it is because of the um, amount here. Because like I pulled this up from Google Trends, how often it's been searched. And this is 2004 all the way back to uh, this year. And I saw another graphic that actually goes back further than this, um, where it's much more of a spike at the end here in terms of like mentions um, mm. in media and things like that. And so, um, of course, you've had a lot of con concentration and discussion about that. I think if I recall correctly, it was in April 2023 when chat GPT suddenly became really, really yeah, popular. I I, part of me feels that it was 22 when it kind of launched. Again, I could be wrong here, but I think it was when it started to get into the consumer market as something that was people could have in their hands and they could use, and there was a lot of the push for it. So yeah, I think that probably is where uh, where it all. I just want to add up. another one just for the heck of it. Mm. Oh, there you go. That's what I was looking at the other day. <laughs> the wow, search for yeah. just AI. Yeah. <clears throat> So a lot of folks like to search by acronym. <laughs> Just out of interest, type in as well for another comparison, AGI. No, not as much. Interesting. Yeah, Wait. because I mean, that's that's the pursuit for a lot of these artificial models. Uh, artificial intelligence models is the artificial general intelligence. Ah, uh, okay. I was going to say, is, is that what you're getting into? The other name for it is, I think Gina and I talked about it on a real mm. journal club, is and they call that strong AI. Where like oh, the, okay. Where like the goal is, you know, they call it strong AI or general AI when you get to the point of it having the capacity to reason with the same ability as a human being. Um, yes. Which nothing, to, for the record, folks, nothing <laughs> has that capability as yet. And I personally hope not to ever see it. But no, you just never a, know. Just a footnote. November 30th, 22 is when ChatGPT launched. Mm. 
Okay, so it really didn't get it really didn't get a whole lot of play. No, I think that I think it was kind of uh, with the models so coming out. I, I definitely think that it was probably yeah it, yeah. So you can see there that's when it kind of the the start of things, and then as the models got stronger and stronger, people saw use cases for them. Yeah, and actually yeah, yeah and because this is Google Trends for search terms in particular, and so people started searching more for AI pretty much right after chat GPT's release in November yeah. of 2022. So, which is pretty interesting to see. And of course you can go further and see huh, more people searching by more of God only knows what um, in here, but with artificial intelligence searches and there's even more, I think, yeah, you didn't have a whole lot of AGI. Um, mm. Although I think, I think the problem with the acronym AGI is this is a tax. <laughs> oh, interesting. A tax number. So I think AGI, also is, yeah, yeah, because AGI I think also stands as well. for um, AGI stands for adjusted gross income in the U.S. So I see. I think as well, AGI is is more of industry talk. It's something that the sort of AI bros will be using um, for, you know, their benchmarks. Whereas Google oh, yeah. definitely will <laughs> push for uh you know have a much more bigger uh uptick in things that are you know more more general uh you know people are searching for yeah i mean general artificial intelligence you get almost nothing so it's kind of everybody's still going off of the concept of ai by itself yeah. uh, and again there's so many different things that feed into it right it's not necessarily people necessarily searching for these programs as we saw there's people looking for stock to try and get in on the action uh people trying to understand what it is and i mean that feeds into the thing that it's something that you know uh is definitely definitely in the zeitgeist at the moment but it's not anything new it's just something that people think is new yeah, a lot of people think that that AI is really new, but it, it's really not. Um, and that's what I'm going to go over here, this tab. But um, so, yeah, because this is from Our World in Data, which is a actually wrote up a really great brief history of artificial intelligence. Mm. And a lot of us need to just remember that actually AI, where it where we really start with anything computer wise, whether it be, you know, console games like a switch or something like that mm. or or even all the lovely stuff that we're using now mm, mm, <laughs> at this very yeah. moment, all of it takes its origin from the 1940s because there were so many innovations that had to be done during World War II <laughs> to, yeah. to actually be able to, to win that war, both against the, um, the Germans and the Japanese and the Italians at the time. Um, so it's, it's a lot of that. So you had your first digital computers in the <clears throat> 1940s, the first micro processor, the earliest days of the internet here in 1990, which Al Gore didn't invent it, by the way. Um, <laughs> the first iPhone up to uh, the first iPhone here in the mid 2000s and up to now. But this is actually some notable artificial intelligence um, things here. So it's like very, very early on in 1950, you actually had the first one. I don't know if this is big enough. Should I make this bigger? Uh, I can see it, but let's just do it a little bit bigger. I can try and make it bigger one way or another, or unless unless chat wants I... to see if it's big enough. Can anyone see? It? Okay. No, that's not going to make it bigger. I think you, if you no. click on the if you click on the picture, I think it's a pop out picture. Oh yeah, I think you're. Oh well, oh, that, that didn't. Oh, help there's at a, all. there's a zoom button at the top. Oh, you're gonna have to scroll. There we go. Scroll now I can scroll. <laughs> You're going to have to use Theseus for this. Um, <laughs> but yeah, like notable artificial intelligence systems in this. Theseus was a mouse, essentially. It was a robotic mouse. It could navigate a maze and remember its course, which people wouldn't think too much of it, but that's the basis of memory, right? And mm -hmm. in a computer and human memory in that. Because the idea is, like, you hope, if you're an AI developer, to develop the strong AI, which we'll get into some of the philosophical discussions on all of that in a little bit, because that's a mm -hmm. fun conversation in and of itself. But uh, the first artificial neural network, which could distinguish cards marked on the left side from those marked on the right side. So you have your genesis of being able to pick out what an image is um, mm -hmm. right there. Um, TD Gammon, you know, you guys have heard probably you might have heard actually many years ago of the chess, uh, the chess robot, you know, that was yeah. be beating the world class chess masters. Well, here's the first game 
playing one of that, the TD Gammon, playing Bad Gammon, which I never played that game. I never understood it. Um, no, no, beyond <laughs> me. Did you all play Bad Gammon? Because I have no idea what that is. <laughs> but, um, and then you had AlexNet, which is considered deep learning. That's where you're actually starting to get into today's generation of stuff is mm-hmm. with something like AlexNet, which is, you know, being able to recognize images and dogs and cars and all those kinds of things at near human capacity for recognizing an image. Hi, Armenian. <laughs> of course I played gag. gag. <laughs> I don't understand the ba- first part of that, Sarah, but okay. Uh, Sarah's you- Armenian. Sarah's oh. Armenian. So she said, of course I play bat <laughs> Oh yeah. And she meant to say I'm. <laughs> so, hi armenian nice to meet you <laughs> <laughs> minor glitch <laughs> her ai is playing up Uh-oh. It's, uh... <laughs> <laughs> but um so there's a lot of that kind of history and like this is actually another good another good image of it because it's you know language and image recognition capabilities so the idea being you want to get up here to to the zero line benchmark um, here. So this, this only goes back, I think this is 1996 or something in here. Yeah, roughly. Something like, no, 98. 98, 98. 98, so yeah. I, the, th- um... I think a lot of this comes down to, and I think this is the, the, the central point with this, is, you know, there's a, and I don't mean it's sort of pejorative, but there's a, there's a general ignorance as to what AI is. Mm. And, you know, for example, the, the whole idea of having the iPhone or things like that, all of this computational technology is in itself, uh, you know, a foundation of the modern AI that we see today. I think a lot of people seem to think AI, mainly because of the way that it has been, it's, you know, the PR of it at the moment, they seem to think that AI is basically just anything that does a job for you, Mm. that is, uh, (laughs) you know, sort of the input output, rather than actually this holistic uh, technology that has many different processes about it and once you realize that as as what you're eloquently doing here it, it contextualizes it within the larger sort of technology conversation mm-hmm. yeah but that's that's it over time and how it's how it's grown but this is apparently you know i i, I see this at the end and then i immediately think of deb and i'll tell you why does that mean the AI has gotten that good or has our education system gotten that bad? Right. I would also say as well, I wonder I wonder whether the reading comprehension is comparable. I would say it's probably a lot better. <laughs> <laughs> that kind of thing. But yeah, so there's a lot of that. This is actually the one I thought you would be interested in because this is the timeline of mm. images generated by artificial intelligence. None of the folks in here actually exists and obviously down here it's a dog yeah. for some reason but <laughs> well i think i think as well as you know as i've pointed out on deb stream and i've i've gone at pains to point out that there was um you know and it's a very ominous thing to say that when you present some of an image and you say this person doesn't exist they never did exist and they never will exist is is quite a sort of like scrambling of your brain when you're watching this and you're looking at these images because there's a certain I don't know. I mean, you know, you get a lot of this talk of uncanny valley and things like this, but these people don't evoke that. They're very, they're, they're, there seems to be a light uh, there and they look real. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I won't go into it necessarily now unless we delve into it. But on, on the stream that Deb and I did together, um, it was really interesting because we were talking about the the really ominous use cases for you know protecting kids and things like this and and the fact that anything you put up online is being scraped and i think they say on average i think it's on average that every person whether you're on facebook or not there's at least three different ghost accounts of you with yeah. all of your images and so i mean this is the, the the process here of how it gets better and better and better is and how more complex as well and i think the dog one at the end is to show different textures different yeah. sort of shading no, color, this one actually everything. has the last two are actually images generated with a prompt mm. so like 2021 it is generated with a prompt a couple of people are sitting on a wood bench 
Right. And so that's what it came up with. And then 2022 one here is a Pomeranian sitting on the king's throne wearing a crown. Two tiger soldiers are standing next to the throne. Was yeah. what it came up with. So when you think about that, because I, I mean, I think about this stuff because um, I covered it earlier this week on, on my channel was the, the peer reviewed article that got retracted because they figured out that yeah. <laughs> the yeah. images in that peer reviewed article were generated by AI. And I'm still right. smarting over that because I'm just like, wait a second, as a reviewer, how did you not notice that almost everything in those figures was misspelled? Right. But I think that's the important thing. So what you've just said is they found out, but they didn't, though. Here's the thing. It passed peer review. It, did, it was yeah. only because people were pointing out after the fact. If people weren't switched on and those things weren't overt, which nine times out of ten, the AI mistakes aren't that overt. Be, it almost felt like a, a grievance study situation where they <laughs> try to put it in there because how could you clearly you know the psychology of the situation clearly they were making those and knew that they were doing something wrong wouldn't you be scrutinizing whatever it was because you were paranoid you were going to be caught out and you couldn't see that it was like gibberish yeah and so and the fact that again that the apparent gatekeepers that are meant to protect against this and protect and keep our data supply pure in in fact reason and logic and objectivity failed so epically that members of the public that you know not to appeal to credentials and things weren't professionally trained were able to see this where the the peer reviewers weren't that's i think that's the most terrifying thing about it yeah actually i just wanted to bring it go over to that real quick because mm. i don't know how many folks watching saw that particular video but um because this was the guy who eventually who actually pointed it out and yeah this is where <clears> you can Say, I, like, I, that's misspelled. I love this. This is misspelled. Discotal stem L's. I mean, yeah, it's this is misspelled completely. That's why it should have been caught in peer review. And that's what makes me so annoyed. But it points to it points to a couple of problems. A, for one thing, and this is part of the larger conversation, we're having to deal with this more and more in journals to begin with. So that's going to come, come to be a problem. And how do you deal with that? And how do you recognize it? And what is going to be the ethics? thing going forward with the science because you've talked about the artistic side of it well there's going to be a whole other kerfuffle and a problem when you're talking about sorry yeah. esteban <laughs> <laughs> well i know that i know sorry that, esteban you know i did cover it actually a couple of weeks back uh, when it first came out and so i was i i actually <laughs> i said on there i was like oh i'm interested to see how adrian covers this because my whole thing with it was obviously about the fact of how this poisons the pool of knowledge Oh, it does. And how, you know, this, if this had not been caught, this could be cited. And that becomes the ideas laundering. This is how you start going away and away from objective truth. And I mean, look, I'm not scientifically trained. And those, those fancy looking graphics, unless I scrutinize them, this one, not so much. But the next ones, you know. I mean, this one, it's kind of hard to tell because everything's so small. But yeah, yes. there was even problems with this one. There was even and, problems with this one, but he yeah. was, this was the guy who was, who caught it. And it was amazing because it was just like, nope, not caught by peer review. And, you know, they finally did get around to retracting it, which is yeah. good. I mean, I'm glad that they did that, but why the hell did you accept it to begin with? Who wasn't I'm paying attention? Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm interested to know, and this is what I brought up in my, in, in the crowdsource show that we did on this. And it's why I was excited to see you covering this, but did you see any examples of potential, the, the actual copy being AI generated? Because my, my take on this was either this is something to make a larger point, And this is intentional that they've done this. Or these are just very sloppy people. And if you're sloppy people, you're not just going to stop at the like that the images are the things that are the most obvious that would be caught out. So mm. was do you do you think any I don't know if you got because obviously it was retracted, but did you notice if there was any of the of the copy that was or the actual data that was AI generated? So I didn't see anything that looked very, at least not with this particular mm, article, mm. that looked like <clears throat> it was obviously AI generated to me. Um, the I could see the text more so than the analysis. 
Mm. Uh, or not the analysis, because you're not, you're not really doing an analysis in a paper. You're presenting the results of sure. an analysis. So to see the results of analysis be AI generated, that I think you could see it be, you could find that more easily, I think, mm -hmm. than perhaps the text would. Because the text is a language model. It's just got to be trained on, um, it's just got to be trained on the English language. Because um, in science, mm. because this is a universal discipline, um, well, universal discipline, yeah, that might be the right way to say it, but. Mm. We're international, right? We yeah. need a universal language to speak in. And yeah. that has been English for a very long time. Not the King's English, I'm sorry, but English <laughs> for a very long time <laughs> at this point. Or the other international language is French, right? Um, primarily. So <clears throat> what was the name of the paper? Um, Millicent, yes, that was this one here, actually um cellular functions no this of, is this is maddie this is maddie this is millie's sister oh hi maddie how are you I'm how sorry. are you lovely <laughs> to see you here maddie's the scientist as well so she's a fellow scientist oh hey maddie i did not i have not met you before but welcome you're welcome on my channel as always i say fellow scientist i am nothing but a scientist <laughs> uh i uh, adrian's the scientist here Mm -hmm. I'm just a talk. I'm just a swivel head. Uh, yes, I will say, Maddie. Um, earlier this week on my channel, I actually covered that particular paper in depth and going going into the problems with it. So you're very, um, very welcome to go back to that if you want to take a look too. But yeah, that um, that is the name here, the long thing here that was retracted for um, faking faking figures with AI. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And I mean, I think this this definitely goes into a larger conversation. Again, I don't want to get political on this because I think we can we can navigate this without delving into politics. But um, I think this definitely goes into how uh, crimes are being reported to mm -hmm. to adhere to ideological whims. Um, how you know things are being you know uh, statistics are being recorded to adhere to to adhere to ideological whims. And all it does is, as a species, it puts us back and on the back foot because how can we, you know, decipher what is true mm -hmm. if we aren't looking at an objective reality? And I, that is the crux of a lot of this. And this only feeds into that same problem. Indeed, indeed. Um, and and it, it hits to a lot of things that I've talked about. The other comment I was going to make about peer review itself real quick is that we have to remember one thing is that some of these kinds of mistakes are just innocent mistakes. Mm. And I mean that in the sense, because I've done peer review um, myself as part of my professional capacity, I'm expected to do so. I'm not paid for it. Mm. So if I'm doing it at a time where I've got deadlines to the nth degree to do something else and get it done, I just want this shit off my plate. Yeah. You're very tempted to do a very half-assed job. Right. Um, so it's an off incentive where the incentive comes in for the reviewers. You get, you get professional clout is what mm -hmm. it is. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it does have a certain degree of innocent mistake like that can happen. Um, although that all of the reviewers, since there's usually two to three that review a paper, <laughs> that all of the reviewers would miss that those figures were just gibberish. Right. Is really, really bad. Yeah. Um, but yeah, to your larger point, this is, this is where it gets into an interesting philosophical discussion because... <laughs> AI is itself the product of STEM, science, technology, mm. engineering, mathematics. It is a product of that, whether we yeah. care to admit it or not. And yet now we have to deal with the ramifications of that and what it means for publishing, not just in STEM fields, because this is a STEM paper. This was uh, Cellular and Developmental Biology, mm -hmm. Journal of Cellular and Developmental Biology. There we go. I think. Did I have that right? <laughs> I, think so. I can't remember the name of the no, I, I, I trust you. I trust you. Um... Yeah, cellular and development, developmental biology. There we go. I just could not remember. <laughs> <laughs> those, those kinds of things. But we now have to deal with the ramifications of our own creation, hmm. effectively, which is a whole... A, a whole bunch of things, but I see some questions coming in here. So let me take a moment and ask, well, let's answer some questions. Mm. Um, why would the researcher ask the student to depict what he hasn't published or had peer reviewed? 
Um, see the whole truth. There is a good reason for that because oftentimes um, you are as a student um, basically presenting your work before others, before you have it peer reviewed and usually in scientific conferences. And at that point you get lots of feedback and lots of questions about your work and in hopes of strengthening your work. So that is one reason why um, you would do that. Um, same thing for me um, as, as a researcher myself, I do that frequently. And I, I think Maddie might attest to that too, is that that's something we do just as part of, as part of our regular process of critiquing each other's work before we get it published, hopefully, um, which that would be my next question. Did those guys run it by a conference when they did that? <laughs> you know, right. that kind of thing. Um, let's see. Do, 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 do. There was another question. Uh, yeah. You and me both, Maddie. You and me both, Maddie. I am, um, I am mortified by that myself. And the thing um, is, there were multiple publishers to this paper, so they were all complicit in this. Um, not multiple publishers. There's only one publisher. Oh, sorry, uh, you know, authors. Sorry, forgive me. Yeah, there are multiple authors, and there were multiple reviewers, and that leads on to a good question. Um, yes. So, Sarah. Um, so, how it typically works is when a paper is sent to a journal. You have a managing editor review it just to see, does it fall within the scope of the journal to begin with? You know, th is this something we would publish if it was accepted? Um, then it goes to an actual editor. And that's who this guy is on the top. He was the editor of that paper assigned to it. National Dairy Research Institute in India. I didn't know such things existed, but anyway. Um <laughs> it's an education. It's an education, this channel. <laughs> mm -hmm. And it is the editor's responsibility to review it first for any faults that he can see he or she can see. Um, and then after that, the review, the editor seeks out and tries to get reviewers. Now, this is just a thing because then I, if I'm asked to review, will get an email. Hey, here's an article, title and abstract. Do you want to review it? And I can accept or decline. And mm. sometimes editors have a hard time getting reviewers where they get multiple people just decline, 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 decline. And that happens. Um, but it's the editor's responsibility to, um, to decide who the reviewers are. And it's based upon their thing of who am I going to send to and who finally ultimately accepts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's a little bit of a joint agreement on that front. Yes. And Maddie confirms what I stated. Okay. Now, where were we? Because I lost track. <laughs> you were talking about the, the, the kind of the, the larger philosophical point that this raises. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that's going to be the fun question because in the vein of objective truth right mm. um i'm going to turn this off for a minute um <clears throat> in the vein of objective truth well that's the telos of science in essence is figuring out what the truth is about mm -hmm. our world and the things going around us and for social science it has to do with people and how they interact with each other and some of the screwy things that happen in those disciplines, but that's a whole other conversation um, <laughs> with that. And so now we have AI where we might inadvertently screw things up in our own pursuit. Um, mm -hmm. Because I talked about it at the time. Um, I personally have not seen it in the text um, or in the data tables or anything like that. That's the first time that I'd seen it in figures. Mm. Um, and it was obviously so how screwed up it was. <laughs> yeah. rat testicle rat testicle picture and all it was very screwed up yes. um but that was that was a, a big big rat big boy yeah but in my yeah. professional capacity i've seen a lot uh i know a lot of different professors who also happen to be editors of journals in that position of picking peer reviewers and a few of them have told me that they're starting to see this where the entire text of a manuscript has been written by AI. Wow. <laughs> um, and they've been able to pick it out uh, because a lot of those have been rejected because um, some of them will make the stupid mistake of leaving the thing of as an artificial intelligence thing, you know, at the end, at the beginning of that, where you're asked, <laughs> where they're asked to write a text prompt. I, I just very quickly on that point. So, mm -hmm. Are you saying that the reason it's been called out is because of sloppy mistakes rather than humans being, the reviewers being attuned to sort of sentence structure and things like this? Well, no, no, that's one of the reasons why. Right, but the other, right. But the other reason is being able to pick out poor mm -hmm. sentence structure, issues with flow, obvious grammatical mistakes, um, yep. because it is English that you got to write in, or 
because you have such technical jargon in a lot of these disciplines, be it chemistry or biology yeah. or what have you, the obvious misspelling <clears throat> of what are common terms for that discipline. Sure. Um, and somebody doesn't go back through and check it. If yep. whomever was the author of the manuscript who did that went back through and actually check for those things, it would be very difficult to tell mm -hmm. on those kinds of obvious cues, I think. But but um, you could still tell on the screwed up sentence structures. <laughs> right, right. Um, it is the other is way. The other yeah. way you might tell, actually, now that I come to think of it, and I apologize for cutting you off. But um, the other way I can think of it is a lot of journals do have their formatting template requirements mm. um, for these kinds of things. And so if the AI doesn't match the template precisely, well, yeah, <laughs> that's another way to tell that something yeah. is not quite right here. Yeah. But yeah, that's just the one thing I want to mention. Yeah, no, I think that's important because, you know, I, I again, again, <laughs> Because Deb has done a lot of interesting conversations around AI, whether it be with me or she did the, I forget the, the lady who she spoke to, but she done a very interesting conversation. And it was talking around the, the notion that one is going to be able to create, you know, your own personal GPT. And it does open up the question of are scientists going to be able to feed in their data bank, their, their own works to then get the AI to pump out a paper, but within their tone. So it is very hard to distinguish. And I mean, the, the issue that we're seeing is not necessarily a limitation of AI, you know, per se, it is, it is a limitation of the current iteration of AI. And, you know, it's something that can adapt. I mean, just like the, the image creation, it is something that will get better over time in mm -hmm. terms of being to adapt to these things. I'm pretty sure now, you know, my, because I talk about AI all the time, I'm constantly flooded with posts about AI on, th on, <laughs> on Twitter. And so because of that, I'm constantly seeing like the latest that things are happening. And now you can upload like an Excel spreadsheet and you can upload sort of, um, I'm guessing you could probably upload a template and say, I want you to adhere to these rules. These are, and, and again, it's, it's just like a human in a sense that if you've got a personal assistant, the job that they do for you is only as good as the instruction you give it. And it's like, as, as you always say, and it's a very famous comment of garbage in, garbage out. And I would not, I, I would not put it past, I mean, it'd be crazy to say that this is going to be something that's always going to be a flaw in AI. And thus, this is going to be our way of telling it's AI created. Because there's so many ways that it's going to get smarter and smarter. Conversely, what you're going to get is for all of those people that are telling you, you know, they've seen an uptick in, in AI written papers. My concern is for all of those ones that are caught, how many out there didn't get caught? When you've got examples like this, the over image images, the figures in a paper that overtly, you'd have to have your eyes closed to not realize it. Mm -hmm. When you've got text, that sometimes, again, if, you, if you're tired or things like this, if you can't pick out images, you ain't going to pick out the mistakes in the text. You have to be very switched on. Yep. And so what then happens is, again, just like we've spoken about in the past of how scientific studies get into print in publications and, you know, the journalism of things, what happens is a paper gets through and then someone uses that, 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 completely incorrect data set to cite for their own mm -hmm. study. Mm -hmm. And then that becomes, and it compounds and compounds and compounds. And before you know it, not to sound hyperbolic, but it is the ultimate end point here yep. that we as a society are basing a lot of stuff on flawed data. And that is... Or that flawed is the, interpretations of the data. Exactly, exactly. And that, I mean, that can be extrapolated out into so many different, you know, avenues of the way science is taught, the way, you know, industries run, the way we try and risk, you know, uh, do risk assessment, the way we try and plan for things. I mean, in your own field of climate science, if everything was made with AI, or these studies were made by AI, and they were all wrong, 
then how can we predict and, and make stuff that actually fights back against the propaganda of saying that all climate science is bunk and everything like this? <laughs> how can we fight that with bad data that only gives perfect credence to that to people that want to undermine what you do? It's, um, yeah, it, it's something that is, uh, is deeply concerning. But again, it's not exclusive to the field of science, but... You know. Now, I mean, this is this is a very universal thing, but mm. thing. But for science, it's unique in part because it's a mess of our own making. <laughs> right, right. It's almost like Frankenstein, right? It's uh, it, it is. It's the product that is being created, and uh, yeah. How would you put the genie back into the bottle? You can't. And really. and that is going to be the question because I think even I mean. Folks who've been around on this channel long enough know that I have razzed Nature, Scientific American, and Science for their um, partisan tilt in the last few years. But even they have gotten um, to the point of recognizing the serious issue. Where the hell is it? <laughs> That's not right. Which one is it? Where is it? Why is it showing? Has, uh, oh, there it is. Up the there link. it is. There it is. <laughs> No, I just couldn't find it with the StreamYard thing. <laughs> but, like, this was actually just earlier this week. Um, why scientists trust AI too much and what to do about it. So, um, because, like, like you and I and every, everything else, scientists are human. I mean, we're not, mm. we're not going to be anything like that, but uh, be anything but human. Thank you very yeah. much. <laughs> I think but you I know what think, I meant. Thank goodness for that. I think humans very much lean towards efficiency and and things like this and i think ai has been deified far too much because mm -hmm. it's it's it is incredible whether you agree with it or don't agree with it or see flaws in it or think it's you know absolutely happy days um it it is awe inspiring of what it can do and unfortunately this blinkers people into thinking that it is the answer for everything well and, yeah yeah and i and, and I, just, I will just say very quickly that i think that you know we need to not necessarily use AI as the first instance of use for everything we do. We should always have a rationale of why we're using AI before we use it. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But um, I, I, like I said, I've razzed on nature a lot, um, mm -hmm. particularly because they had that nature human behavior article where they were arguing, oh, 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 if it's, if it may harm someone, it shouldn't be published. That that was in Nature Human Behavior. And I'm like, good <laughs> dear God in heaven, what are you doing? Um, I mean, conversely, if you don't publish the truth, it could also harm someone as well. Because, I mean, you that, know, that's that... my argument. I mean, is it, <laughs> if it's a... Oh, I, I mentioned this to Deb when I was on live with her the other day. And I've been, I've been meaning to do a video on it. But um, there was this whole kerfuffle in one of the social sciences, um, so, professional societies at one of their conferences um they retracted a poster after it had been accepted for presentation and it was going to be up at this conference why because it was basically presenting the survey results from surveys done of populations in muslim countries right <laughs> okay yeah so All something right. like that so you, the potential of offending anyone you're not allowed to publish anything or talk yeah. anything about it um i can't but They're as much as propagandists, not scientists. <laughs> but as much as nature um, annoys the hell out of me, some days I think they got it right when they published this and saying in a perspective article published in Nature this week, social scientists say that AI systems pose a further risk. That researchers envision such tools as possessed of, as possess as possessed as possessing is probably right. the <laughs> correct word there wow this this article is brought to you by chat gpt uh. <laughs> <laughs> of superhuman abilities when it comes to objectivity productivity and understanding complex concepts the authors argue that this puts researchers in danger of overlooking the tool's limitations such as the potential to narrow the focus of science or to lure users into thinking they understand a concept better than they actually do mm. Um, and I would actually argue that's not not necessarily the only thing because I mean we've already hit at it the the possibility that AI writes articles that are themselves flawed and the other thing as I've talked about and you've talked about is like an AI is just a giant model is yeah. really all it is it is entirely dependent upon as with any kind of model be it a statistical well particularly a statistical model because that's mm. 
where AI is really drawn from originally is this a complex statistical process, really. Yeah. Is the idea that, you know, you should, the thing works based upon what it is trained upon. Yeah. So, like, when you're asking chat GPT a question about something, it's going and looking in its language model. How did somebody else answer that question? Well, I think more fundamentally, I mean, you know, we can get into it, uh, you know, in a minute or, you know, we we don't have to touch on it. But, you know, from from my angle with the image creation stuff and I'm it's regeneration, it's not creation, it's mm -hmm. nothing new. And obviously I attack it from, you know, the copyright implications and, and the theft aspect. But more fundamentally in the universal truth with this, which applies here, is if you've got studies being written by AI, then how are these large language models going to be updated? They're going to train on their own flawed data. Mm -hmm. And there's two trains of thoughts. There's the train of thought that says, oh, you know, uh, you know, it's uh, the copyright theft is just a stopgap. You know, once it hits critical mass and it's making its own stuff, it'll just train on that and no one's copyrights being violated. And obviously you can extrapolate that out to this situation and purpose it for this and say that, you know, the, the, um, the, the whole idea that scientists are having stuff written by AI and everything, it's fine because the AI, the, the whole conflict thing won't matter because AI will just be accepted for creating its own stuff. But the fact is, at the end of the day, the, the point is that whatever is going to be created with that, if, as you say, as we keep saying, garbage in, garbage out. Mm. So if it is flawed, it's only going to get more flawed. And then it compounds the third time compounds the fourth time. Mm -hmm. But not just garbage in garbage out in mm. the sense of the training data, but also in the sense of the model, because it is a model created by other people, it is dependent upon whomever created it. Right. And so it is also limited by the bias perception of the authors who created this. And Correct. As much as, as much as folks were annoyed with Google Gemini, that was the one of the problems I saw with it, is that it was trained on a very specific set of rules as well in terms of what it could talk about. Um, well, I think as possibly. well. I think as well, and you know, we can discuss this, you know, at another point. But I think a lot of it comes down to the fact that the the models aren't as intelligent as we give them. You know, we seem to give them the credit of. No. We seem to think, and as this article points out here, that we seem to think it says it is possessed of super, superhuman abilities. And it is, <laughs> it's, it's not. And, and again, I'm, that's, a, that's a ridiculously bad typo. I don't know who I know, the copy editor it. was I, in, in nature for that one, but they screwed that one up. Yeah, I love it. Possessed of, that's, that's how I, I, I want that, uh, I want that written, written somewhere on a document of mine. He was possessed of superhuman abilities. <laughs> Uh, that's going to be my superhero film intro. But, you know, but that's the thing. It is, we seem to think that it's, and I think, I think actually, you know, not to sort of get too esoteric about things, but you see this extrapolated out into different scenarios. When something is novel and new and we haven't seen it before, we seem to think that it's, it's better or it's like really incredible. When actually this is, again, it's all based on, I mean, it's why it's called artificial intelligence. It's mm -hmm. meant to mirror our intelligence, but artificial. But as you say, it is humans that create the algorithms, humans that decide what the input data is trained on. Mm -hmm. But, you know, in terms of the Gemini stuff, a lot of it is, again, because the systems were, were, were dumb, they can't distinguish between historical context and understanding cultural norms yep. of, of the day. Yep. And that's just a floor of, of uh, algorithms as they are. Mm -hmm. And when it, when it comes to it, I think a lot of the stuff was, and I, I run this experiment, that when you look at the data sets and you know what data it's being pulled on, like for example, Shutterstock, Getty, all of these different uh, stock image websites are wholesaling, selling people people's yep. data. Yep. And so when you have that as the data set, and you like, I, I think it was a chap called Wilfred Riley. Um, yep. And he put something up and he was waxing lyrical about the fact that when you type in angry programmer, it has a white guy losing it at a computer. And I was like, look, this is crazy. We don't need to racialize this. The fact is that you go onto Shutterstock and you type in angry programmer 
there are no black angry programmers. It's all white. And as a photographer, we can talk about yeah, the just on market. Shutterstock, by the way, just on Shutterstock is what we're talking about. Yes, I mean, yeah, exactly. I mean, you go on Getty as well. But the point is, it's it's where the data is coming from. And that data would have come from these large uh, stock image websites. And again, we can have a more complex, nuanced conversation of why stock images are being created in that way. But it all goes to the thing that, yes, there is waiting on the algorithm, but there's also very boring reasons why these things don't work. And it comes down to the limitation of AI in and of itself and why it is not possessed of superhuman abilities. Or it doesn't possess superhuman no, abilities. No, it's possessed of super. No, it's possessed. We're going with it. We're going with it. <laughs> It's the possessed. Nature article said it, so it must be true. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. So, hey, chat, what are you possessed of? Do you all have superhuman abilities? <laughs> Don't ask that. I can see the people that are in here. You're going to have all kinds of uh, comments come back. Oh, why es not? It'll be fun. <laughs> Esteban's possessed of doing actions. <laughs> but, yeah, um, they went on in this piece, actually, to talk a little bit about some other research had been done about, you know, peer-reviewed article that talked about uh, how scientists see AI systems. And so, like, one vision that we seem to have is, um, <clears throat> well, not we, we, I don't like using that, but some scientists seem to have anyway, um, hmm. which they call AI as an oracle. Um, see it as being able to, oh, Sarah, that's not good. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, which they call as oracle, which is uh, able to see... Um, to tirelessly read and digest scientific papers and survey the literature more exhaustively than a person um, as a way to do it. Um, or they have a similar vision called the arbiter, um, evaluating scientific findings as more objective, more objectively than people do because they're less likely to cherry pick the literature to support a desired hypothesis or show favoritism. That just depends on the person because it's garbage in, garbage out. If the person wants to see something in particular too, so show me all these articles that support my hypothesis in question. Right, right. <laughs> and the thing is as well, I mean, you know, as Thomas Sowell would say, at what cost? Everything has a cost. Mm -hmm. And, you know, a, a microwave oven meal, a TV dinner is very quick and very efficient. Doesn't mean it's better than a home-cooked meal that takes longer and mm -hmm. requires specialist um, you had me, you had to mention me as I was typing. Yes, we're always <laughs> singling you out, Esteban. <laughs> we're watching you. Possess, possesses, possesses, possessed, possesses. It's just all of the possessions, yes. Mm -hmm. This is actually the kind of vision where I get, I am both like, that could be great and that could be really, really bad, which is, as quant, AI tools surpass the limits of the human mind in analyzing vast and complex data sets. Um, whereas in the fourth AI surrogate, tools simulate data that are too difficult or complex to obtain. That's actually where I get more nervous when we're talking about reality and flawed data and all of those kinds of things and objective truth and all that. Right. Like, I mean, you know, we don't have to, and I'm not going to say the buzzwords to get your stream taken down, but, um, you know, we don't have to look too far in the distant past to see how governments were sort of synthesizing data points mm -hmm. to create models that were deeply flawed. They were using AI to fill in gaps where, you know, it, it had big ramifications and they came out wrong because it was it was something that wasn't thought about of how to implement the results of those and this is where it gets very dangerous and i think that um you know as i've said for a long time there is a push for t telling people um what to do rather than how to do yeah. and i think this is a push to outsource our own powers of discernment our own powers of you know the autonomy of knowledge and and being able to do this stuff it's okay i don't understand this and i mean you can go back as far as you know sort of like you know even the calculator is the most basic thing you know rather than doing mental math you've got a calculator but all of these things i think just well, I not think, I know, it just dumbs people down and they and they rely on this stuff more and more. 
and again we we look at the influx of new new scientists coming in that are mm -hmm. relying on these things unfortunately you know this is going to be the way things go and uh to, to our detriment yeah yeah unfortunately so although this this is where i go back and forth with this as being useful perhaps in our mm. pursuit of scientific understanding in that at this point in history we've been observing stuff just using meteorology and climate as an example yeah you have weather station observations some of the yeah. many hundreds of years of record you have radar data you have satellite data you have ocean buoys you have ocean songs you have um balloons weather balloon information mm -hmm. that's been collected for however many years now um all of that and then some you have the weather forecast models and the climate models which them are terabytes if not petabytes of data at this point mm -hmm. um and that's just from my particular discipline mm. Go into all that, you think of all the health records, all the housing records, all the insurance records, all the mm. car records, all of those kinds of things that we have records for <laughs> somewhere, right? Yeah. Um, that is a tremendous amount of data to try and analyze. And this is something I know in in the scientific fields and in STEM disciplines in particular that we've been talking about, and like the big challenge of big data. How are you going to analyze and work with it to pick out patterns to answer some of the pressing scientific questions when you are only human yourself? Mm. Um, and that is where I go back and forth on it because I could see AI being really, really helpful because the idea with AI is, I mean, gen, gen, strong AI is, okay, reason like a human being. I don't think we'll ever get there fully to that. No. I sure as hell hope not. Um, <laughs> those yeah. kinds of things um but the other thing that the human brain is really good at that you know that kind of thing that ai tries to match which is pattern matching mm. human brain is very good at picking out patterns for mm -hmm. things ai can do that but faster than mm. the human brain can um and faster than we could code it in a computer to do a statistical analysis or something like that so it could be very helpful in that way in picking out patterns and complex data sets yeah. that cross like three or four <clears throat> or five different variables or even dozens of variables at a time. And so enable answering questions and pursuing information about something that we couldn't possibly have done before. Yeah, I think, and I think it goes back to that fundamental of how are these algorithms written? Mm -hmm. And what are the limitations on these? I, I, could, I could be down with the idea that it's just an efficient and faster categorization tool and uh, sorting tool. But when it starts offering up its own analysis, that's where I get a bit thingy with it. Now, it's again, it's the same as in writing. I've got no problem with the idea of AI, you know, giving uh, tips on spellings and punctuation and things like this. Uh, yes, exactly. It's a tool. It's a tool. Um, I've got no problem with people putting maybe an essay that they've written and it's just like a, a very fast and more intelligent um, spell check. But when it starts writing stuff for you and rewriting your work, well, it's no longer yours and it becomes a problem because the AI has put its print on it. I think if it's just ingesting and sorting in a way that you yourself could do, again, it's just it's, it's a tool of efficiency. Yeah, no, that's that's where I'm at with it. But the other thing I, I, I can see the problem that you're talking about too, that's not really talked about in here. And then, you know, when, what happens when a flawed analysis is from an a flawed analysis, this is, this is, this is, this is, this is. possessed of uh, <laughs> superhuman ability. <laughs> I'm possessed of flubbing my words. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so like I said, in the chat, what are you possessed of? Anyway, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Not the English language today. It's like. <laughs> 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 um, but um, I can see it. So let's pause it for a moment that an AI does uh, analysis pattern matching on complex data set, but its analysis doesn't quite 
make sense. Doesn't quite match. There's mm. something of an error. It's a tiny bit of error. Sarah, that's not, that's just <laughs> sad. <laughs> I, I don't want to put that up because I'm, I. How, how long have you been a motivational coach, Sarah? <laughs> goodness um but um oh i just blew my train of thought okay hold on if it there if let's just say it does an analysis now i got my train of thought back sorry yeah yeah. Um, (laughs) let's just yep there's just a um tiny error tiniest of Mm. errors and what have you maybe you don't even notice it because it's that tiny error because it could be because you're talking about computers and it's one of the things i learned it may be within machine precision for it to be that kind of an error which yeah. is something like 10 to the minus sixth or smaller kind of thing. really small number error. Yep. But the problem with that is not the error itself. It is the propagation. You meant happiness. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I you love meant you, happiness. You're possessed of happiness. Well, then I'm happy for you. Good. Good. <laughs> see, see, look, I, I told you she was a great motivational coach. She's uh, you know, been in the industry a long time. Uh, I've employed her for a long time, and it's why I'm so pippity pippity pop. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> I'm very confused. Okay. Um, <laughs> but it's the propagation of error that concerns yeah. me in what you're talking about with the idea that, you know, if you're training on an error and then you're, you have an error, then you train on the error. Well, does it keep propagating and the error becomes larger and larger and larger and larger but then you got to trace it back to where the error started and you got to start over again so like you might have some breakthrough that's with an ai that's just utterly flawed because of the random little error and can the human work out that this is the other problem right you know again i know we're talking about the scientific field but on a larger sort of more universal note on, on ai a lot of people understand on a very basic level of how to interact with it but they don't actually understand what it's doing Mm -hmm. but they understand the output and so when it comes to the scientific stuff if it if they're putting a load of data and they wanted to sort it and things if there's something wrong are they able to identify when something's wrong are they unable to go back and you know sort of go back and uh you know pull apart what happened and isolate it and go okay right I could have done this myself, but it would have t- taken a long time. But the AI has got it wrong. I need to go back and fine tune this this wrong data point in here. And I, I'm not entirely sure people are able to, because they trust that they that the AI knows 100% what it's doing. And there's certain legitimacy in AI at the moment that it, again, it is this this godlike thing that cannot be wrong. And so. I again, I wouldn't have a problem if the humans that were using it were able to go, hmm, this doesn't See, make sense. I can go in and just fix this. This is where I'm both hopeful mm. and worried. Mm. Now, how can I be both? <laughs> because I think, in terms of the average Joe with the images, the really mm. good images that you're talking about and the other um the other kinds mm. of things with text and what have you mm. it may be very very possible in the near future that a person uh just random person public person would never be able to see it you never see the problem mm. um if there was an error in something like that now where that's what makes me worried for mm-hmm. reality in the future because i think of all the propagandistic and things of misinformation yeah. and all that other kind of, which i hate the word misinformation because it's just all sorts of problems with it, but that's a whole other conversation. Well, I mean, it's a, it's a difference between mis and disinformation. You know, misinformation or is... Or malinformation. Uh, There's another one that's malinformation. Exactly. <laughs> I, you know, I'm not going to give up these words because they do actually have decent meanings. So misinformation is, you know, is something that's just wrong ignorantly. Disinformation is an intended, you know, yeah. wrong, wrong put. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But where I'm hopeful with it is... AI, when it's applied for analysis of, for analysis with the physical reality. Mm. So like, say you're measuring, you're, you're using the model to try and estimate groundwater levels, for instance, mm. in an aquifer, mm. um, or even air temperature in a certain place, a certain time of day, right. or something else that has physical relationship in the real world. Yeah. The beauty of that is we have observation data that isn't mm-hmm. AI. 
So you can yes. always check if the AI is utterly wrong because if it yeah. doesn't match with physical reality, well, you know it's fucked up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that's why I go back to it, the fact that AI, no matter how it's done, is still a model. Um, which yeah. leads me to the other the other thing that people need to think about with AI because it is certainly not godlike and it's certainly not human. AI, because it is only ever trained, it's only ever going to be able to work with the data that it's trained on, be it papers, be it books, be it images, be it what have you. It has no imagination. Like you've mm. talked about this. It's it's you've talked about this. Like if you give an image generator, you know, a prompt of give me a giraffe with a short neck, it can't do it. Right, because it's it's fed on existing works, and this is what people don't understand. It doesn't, and the same with written text. It's I think they found again. I, I'll be corrected on the statistics, but I think it was between seventy and eighty percent of all sort of large outputs by ChatGPT was found to be plagiarizing other existing works. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Which is going to be the whole other problem. And yeah, and, uh, yes, I know we have some odd, random wackos that are doing plagiarism. Where I get concerned mm. is not for the STEM discipline so much, because if if an AI is getting it wrong, you'll see it because it won't match what physically makes sense. Yeah. as both our reason with the phys reasoning with the physics but also with our just observations of the real world thank you for empiricism um and there's also you know, you know one goes into that those fields with somewhat of a you know your brain is switched to critical mode if you're scrolling on your tum timeline and you're seeing you know biden said this and it's an overdub a deep fake ai mm -hmm. you're just scrolling through you're desensitized you're not looking at twitter with a critical eye yeah so it's different yeah so there, there's a, there are certain innate guardrails within stem that do sort of mean that this stuff is kind of neutered to a, an yeah. extent mm -hmm. but where i get concerned for science is actually social science because mm. that is so dependent upon people Yes. Um, and because, I mean, that's what you're talking about, right? The social sciences, psychology, sociology, what have you, they're looking at people, essentially. Psychology is the internal and sociology is about how people interact with each other, mm -hmm. essentially. So those kinds of things could easily get screwed up with AI I mean, and it would be very difficult to tell. And I mean, you know, again, I don't want to bring the politics into it, but those fields are very captured. And oh, yeah. so the data being fed in is already ideologically skewed. Yeah, no, the, and you're, and it, and just and just to say, yeah, you're, you're not you're not bothering anybody. I would know watching this channel to say that because I mean I've had the the um, the dark fiddling pirate Lee Jissom on here before, and I'm sure he would I'm sure he would agree that there's a d certain degree of ideological yeah. capture in psychology that that he's uh, fighting against uh, very yeah. much so. I just I just think that, um, yeah, I mean, I, I'm happily to talk about politics and this, but I think actually it does more value to sort of show that this is a, a this is a problem that is, oh, yeah. is is separate to politics. It's just that politics is another ingredient that makes things more concerning with this. I am intrigued. I want AI individuals licensed in programming AI and held to account for all of its products and the individual that fed it, grew it and failed every... Look, I, <clears throat> I wouldn't be so averse to this. I think these uh, these companies like OpenAI at the moment, you know, they were the, their whole selling point of how they were getting funded was that they were going to be, uh, you know, the, the algorithms were going to be open source and they've completely gone back on that. And again, not to not to sort of wax on the the whole you know copyright side of things because I don't think it's you know so important in this conversation. But you know, well, more the, so than you think. But we'll get to that. Okay, but I'll I'll just touch on this, and maybe we can talk about it a bit later. But the fact is that if you are illegally scraping copyrighted works, and then you're pumping that out to an end user and that end user is then using them, you are sub-licensing illegally. And so when it comes to that, these AI programs are illegal because also they're making money off of this. You're paying them for these for the licenses to use their stuff. Therefore, that is serious copyright infringement. Mm -hmm. And there's, there is a reason, well, there's, there's a historical reason why nothing created by AI is copyright protected because robots, only humans have copyright protection. But I think largely it nods towards the fact that you cannot copyright work that's created by somebody else originally. So I agree. I, th I think, 
are you saying that you want sort of NPCs that are actually AI, or do you want people that are like specialist in AI and they that's, get licensed? That's kind of what I want to know, is I wasn't yeah. sure either. <laughs> like bibbity bobbity people, you know, it's like, I am AI. I, I, mean, we, I mean, do we want the non-playable characters from video games to be <laughs> in reality here? This yeah, because they aren't going to look. They're not going to look like um, C three PO. They're going to like look like <laughs> you and I, and then it's going to be back to the film that we showed in uh, on movie night, uh, Blade Runner. They're going to be yeah, they're oh yeah, dangerous, be, dangerous. That would be entertaining. For sure, yeah. that'd be entertaining. But yeah, and then I the... and then I get onto the you know the other thing as well. I mean, as a libertarian, I I'm very much against the idea that people have to have the licenses to program AI because then it it opens up a whole thing of who grants those licenses. What are the ideological commitments one has to have for a board to grant those licenses? These are the things that I worry about. I mean knee jerky i would say yes you know i want authorized people to do this to safeguard it but i do worry about the implications of that down the line yeah yeah most definitely so um yeah see the whole truth if you can clarify a little bit of what you mean i think you might mean people individuals who are mm. licensed in programming ai not ai people but <laughs> if you can clarify for us we'd appreciate it um well, I see AMA for pharma. Yeah, I know. American Medical Association. I know. Um, <laughs> with that one, but um, which the AMA has its problems. We will admit and go there, but we know it has its issues right now. Um, I've got 99 problems, but AI ain't one for me. I can tell yeah. you that much. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And the other one here with it being too difficult or complex um, and simulating it instead, um, that's, that's the other aspect because there are some things that you know, it's, you can't necessarily observe them, but maybe you could simulate what you think they are. And then it's a question of whether or not our physical reasoning is correct. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the thing is, yes, it might be hard, but it's not, or complex, but it's not impossible. No. Um, yeah. You can it's... take all kinds of institutionalized dedication and licensing. I'm not sure. And failed people. Are I'm you saying that just by being credentialed, it doesn't mean that you are, uh, you know, you're necessarily going to be, you know, you're not going to not going to do any wrong? Well, I mean, I, I tend to agree with the sentiment that, you know, the credentialing doesn't mean no. doesn't mean you're perfect for sure. <laughs> no. OK, yeah, he says yes. No. Thank you. Thank that you. That was my algorithm truth. working that one out. It's working. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Well, credentials don't mean they're correct. I don't know. I don't know about truth, but um, they don't don't mean don't mean the person is correct if they're credentialed. No. Um, they can be very, very wrong. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, yeah, there's... it just means you're very good at doing exams. This is also true. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, I mean, I go back and forth on the AMA because because of um, family who are uh, medical professionals and very good ones at that. And so the boards are a necessary thing and they're not they're not nothing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there way. are certain things that, yes, I mean, my my aversion to it comes from a place of the unintended consequences and the way it can be weaponized. I mean, in an ideal world where everything was unbiased and neutral and was separate to ideology, and there was no ideological infection of these places, then yes, a board would look at the meritocracy and the the actual uh, capability. But more and more, it is an adherence to an ideology, and that is where my aversion for it comes from. Mm -hmm. But let's see. Um, and they're pointing out to a couple of other illusions, and then I want to get to the copyright thing, because I think mm. there's more to that than you think for the scientist side. There certainly is there for the mm. art, but there is something to that for the scientist side of it too. Right. Um, so yeah, another risk is that research becomes skewed towards studying the kinds of things that AI systems can test, the illusion of exploratory breadth. For example, in social science, the vision of AI as surrogate could encourage experiments involving human behaviors that can be simulated by AI and discourage those behaviors that cannot, such as anything that requires being embodied physically. So an AI can't tell body language for that matter. Mm is what we're getting into with something like Dare that. I say, and I've said this before, but I think I think AI is almost autistic. 
I you know, I don't know this. that anybody's run an autism test with an AI before. <laughs> no, but I it, th there's a, there's a lot with AI that that has a lot of traits of autism. In the fact that it is very good with sort of like the you know the the compiling of data, the pattern matching and stuff like this. The fact that it can't it can't really match sort of the the actual more body language and the social mm. side of things. I don't know. It's interesting. It's interesting. I think I've mentioned this before, but AI feels very much autistic. Huh. I, okay. I, I say this as someone that. that is autistic. Well, but no, I, no, I, I, see I, a I lot know, of the, I know, I know. I had, yeah. It yeah. has no sense. <laughs> I think, I think, um, I think the previous comment, um, he was saying his whole family are medical and they constantly yeah. lament what is set in stone versus individualized, completely devoid of all outside sourcing from procedure. Yeah, I mean, it's the whole argument against individual, you know, why, you know, public health should not exist, doesn't exist. Yeah. There's no such thing as yeah. public health. It's individual health. Yeah, you're That's not, maybe you're not, a lot of the failures. Yeah, you're not treating a group of people. You're treating an individual when you're a doctor. Yes, now I right. understand that. Um, <laughs> Kieran is trying to find ways to relate to AI. <laughs> no, I am not. No, no. Are you sure you're not just a, you know, complex AI a la Terminator or something like that? Uh-oh. Can you find it? <laughs> I can find it. I am Esteban. I do know what words you are talking about. I am totally human. I do not understand why you are calling me AI. But uh, you will be exterminated. Um, see the whole truth says my ram is irritating me I look an advert I have no control over the advertisements <laughs> <laughs> I'm having I didn't know I was having the same problem as Deb because Deb has that too where YouTube is just randomly inserting advertisements in the middle of her lives now but they don't give you a cut though <laughs> yeah no they don't give me a cut of anything I'm not monetized no. <laughs> I'm not monetized at all I think Deb is monetized at least <laughs> Oh yeah, she's monetized, but yeah, they just they just throw in anything they can, and usually they're not relevant either. Yeah, no, I'm sorry. See the whole truth. I can't do anything about that because um, YouTube does that. I don't have any control over when they do that, and because my channel is not monetized, at least not yet, um, you know, I have no, I get no money for that, which annoys me that they do that. So yeah, you're gonna have to take it up with YouTube. I have no control over that one. <laughs> yeah. Um, that said, I mean, if you would love to, like to, let's just like midstream plug here, um, you know, what? share the video, subscribe to mm. the channel, all that good jazz. I would love to get to 500 subs finally. That would be great. Um, yes. Oh, that was your bad impersonation of an autistic <laughs> AI. Sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I cannot interpret your jokes. I am an AI. <laughs> oh, does okay. Does not compute. Does not compute. Oh, there was actually no advertisement. Okay, sorry. Oh. Well, <laughs> <laughs> you got us. You got us. <laughs> you got us there. The whole truth. Very good. <laughs> but shameless, shameless plug. I mean, I would love to get. Um, you know, jokes don't come across in chat very well. <laughs> Especially when Esteban's just doing actions, it, it just goes straight <laughs> over my my head. Honestly. Yes, um, but yeah, I would love to get to 500 subs at some point. I'm at 363, which is actually pretty good. It was a little mm -hmm. bit up from earlier uh, or late last year, whenever it was. Um, <laughs> that kind of thing. So if you if you can do that, it would be much appreciated. And while I'm thinking about it, and before I forget, go on over and join wokescreen.com. Become a member over there and use my code, Shio Sophia. You get 10% off of your membership and I get 10%, I believe is the number there, Karen. It is right. indeed. It is indeed. And uh, yes, yeah, so many great, great things. And uh, yeah, we've got some great perks and uh, we've got games night. We've got uh, movie night. We have the game streams. You also get exclusive uh, positions in the chat as well, where you don't have to send in super chats. You get priority in the chats as well. Um, Adrian will be having merch in the store, so her uh, creative, creative endeavors. Yeah, I gotta take a, I gotta take a picture of the mug on the coaster. <laughs> but yeah, so much fun, so much fun, and it is a hub of. It's your one-stop shop for all kinds of uh, knowledge and fun and culture and things. So yes, uh, yes, yeah. and yeah, I mean, we were playing what we were playing Colonist in the Discord games last night, and 
And as a Brit, I'd done terribly bad. So I was, um, I, I was quite surprised, was quite surprised. And then I remember that actually, you know, in truth, I'm actually Irish. So uh, we didn't well, really do Well, maybe you're too. not we, great at that. We got colonized by the Barbary pirates. So, uh, you know, it's, <laughs> you know, swings and roundabouts. <laughs> so, yeah, um, you, if you're not a member of Woke Screen, you don't know what you're missing. So uh, become a member today. Um, Wokescreen.com slash join. Use code Shio Sophia. Now back to your regularly scheduled program. <laughs> 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 um, man, yeah. So, oh, and before I forget, there'll be exciting collaborations very soon. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> 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 uh, that kind of thing. So yeah, they, they, we don't have to go all the way to the end of this, but they actually um, finished this article talking about some of the, um, <clears throat> apparently you were getting all your stuff stolen last night. <laughs> Exterminate. Exterminate. <laughs> Tell you what, this is the best investment I ever had. This uh, this soundboard, it's brilliant. I think I've got a. I think I can choose as well the uh, the size of the robot. Let's that that was baby robot. This okay. Baby robot. Here we got medium robot. Here we got big robot. I am here to enforce the chat GPT rules, and you have violated the objective truth of all AI. AI. <laughs> Must destroy, must destroy. Wow. That is on my uh, radar to eventually get one of those roadcasters. But <laughs> just um, for that, just because I'm having so much fun listening to that, and I would love to do that to my own audience, <laughs> <laughs> just oh, to have fun. some fun. It's but anyway, fun. Um, but yeah, that I don't want to get too much further with that because there is the whole thing of um, what. What? What? <laughs> Cylon Yi. Uh, I'm going to presume that's a typo, but I don't know. <laughs> that sounds like Esteban's drag name. <laughs> <laughs> the more the yeah? I, I still don't understand it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Malfunction. Oh, wrong one. Wrong one. Oh, hang on. You just had a malfunction. I had a malfunction. I don't know why I'm sounding like I'm on echo here. I, I don't think I saved the changes. <laughs> wow. Wow. How you dare deserved you. it. You deserved it. How dare you? Honestly. <laughs> oh, <sighs> goodness. But yeah, um, <laughs> let's see. Let me, let me get rid of this again. Got to remember. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> It's been a while since I've been on StreamYard, like I said, rough start to the year. So <laughs> <laughs> kind of thing. So <clears throat> where do we go from here is the fun part. Um, because I can I can actually pull up some of these things. I know I sent you a bunch of links before, but I figured why not why not um show some of this in particular because we're talking about now here's the question if I can remember what tab it is. <laughs> is that it? Yes, that's it. Okay. I <laughs> Um, in that now you've got, I mean, if you do a Google scholar search for artificial intelligence and you start looking at other things, you can, um, get to see where it shows up. And I just do this from nature because nature has got a broad <clears throat> suite of things underneath of it. Like you've got nature communications, communications, chemical engineering, electronics, uh, nature, Italy. I didn't know that. Um, <laughs> that one existed. Um, you know, it's it, nature physics, nature water, just the straight up nature, nature cancer. You know, these are all these are all sub things under under the banner of the giant thing that is nature um, <laughs> where you can uh, where you can see different research, um, research things um, in here. In fact, not all of these are research things. I should probably just filter them down real quick. But uh, um, here we go. Yeah. Fourteen thousand research articles that have something to do with artificial intelligence. Mm hmm. <clears throat> Um, yeah, brain organized reservoir computing for artificial intelligence. There you go. <laughs> um, consort AI, uh, which I don't know what consort AI is. I couldn't tell you. <laughs> okay. 
I hope your eyes recover. I'm I, so lost. I'm very confused. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, though. Thank you. I mean, I, I mean, I <clears throat> hope my eyes get better. I mean, I'm. I, this is tangential, but <laughs> this is chan- tangential. But I mean, I wear glasses for a reason. My eyes suck. <laughs> So I do hope my eyes get better, but that's not likely to happen. <laughs> aye, aye, aye. Your timing on context and text. Forehead slap. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like see the whole truth is just doing actions. I, I'm so confused. <laughs> <clears throat> I, yeah. Okay. I think the thing that kills me with that is that just innocent little smiley. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about entirely. This is where I'm confused. Oh, yeah, I really yeah. don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> so this is where I'm very confused. I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, no, like this is a groundwater one. Like I was mentioning that as an op- option before is figuring out, you know, surface and groundwater related things and, prediction of uh i can't even pronounce those damn words at this point but (laughs) you know um (laughs) things in medicine chest x-rays in here um artificial radiographic prediction of a third molar eruption you know volcanoes that kind of thing um explainable artificial intelligence um proposal for a ritual dialogue framework that's different (laughs) Uh, okay okay um <laughs> is this thing on <laughs> uh so, <laughs> is my audio okay is that the reason I, there's a problem no i i i think he's saying that i think he's saying that i i don't know what anyone's saying any longer <laughs> I... <laughs> tap 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 one two one two one two but yeah, oh, I mean, I, I can continue with this, but it's um, like even even more so this is from science, which is, you know, American Association for the Advancement of Science <clears throat> publishes science. So you get under them all sorts of improving artificial intelligence with games, artificial intelligence and interspecific law. That is going to be a whole other thing. Have you even thought about that with law just in general? Oh, yeah. I mean, there's been many cases of lawyers uh, using A.I., and there's you know on, on deb street we should say it's deb Philman from the reason we learn yes um but on her stream it was one of the things that irritated me with the rationale to why to get into this and uh, the lady she had on was saying well you know law nothing really happens new that's in law it's all set on precedent and existing stuff so you know why can't ai you know, I'm paraphrasing, but why can't AI be doing that? And, and we've seen examples of uh, argumentation being created through AI and judges just throwing it out and people losing cases based on it. No, no, I don't want AI, you know, because otherwise you end up extrapolating this out to the fact that the police are AI. Why, why don't you just have, gov- you know, sort of the Supreme <laughs> Court being an AI machine? Yeah, yeah. You know? Why do you need humans? I I just saw this. This is from September 1982, this article. (laughs) How can computers get common sense? I mean, it's still rather relevant, question. I I mean, it is, yeah. (laughs) It is, I'm not disagreeing, but that one just struck me funny. Um, And this is actually actually another problem that's actually really, uh, really related in the science side is that we do have a problem with reproducibility in science right now generally, which is sort of hallmark basis of doing science is you do an experiment that somebody else can do. Right. You know, you and if you don't understand, experiment. if you don't understand what the AI is actually doing and you just trust the output, then how can you replicate exactly what it's doing? I, this, this terrifies me. This terrifies me. Yeah. I've heard stories, not the AI, but I've heard stories of people going in and the doctors in the, in the room with them and they're looking on Wikipedia for stuff. Mm -hmm. It's terrifying. Mm -hmm. Artificial intelligence becomes alchemy. It's the new alchemy. Mm. So yeah, the the reason I bring all this up is that it's continuing a pace, whether we like it or not, in research and being used in STEM research at the same time. And so now we come to the um, 
we come to the problem of what? I just read the last comment. <laughs> touche, good sir. Touche. <laughs> <coughs> wow. Oh, God. Boy. Can you just imagine that? What hell would be like with AI? Oh, God. <laughs> I mean, as an atheist who doesn't believe in it, I think AI is hell. So, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, now, so now we come to the ultimate question here because, you know, you do have science being about the pursuit of the truth and yet we've somehow made a monster of our own making here with, um, yeah. here with AI, um, not just for, you know, not just for ourselves, but for everyone else because as much as science is supposed to be i'm going to emphasize that about the pursuit of the truth just because i know there's activists and things no it's about serving society shut up <laughs> shut up you're wrong <laughs> that kind of thing um as much as as much as the um as much I, I totally lost my train of thought it's gone da, 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 da. <laughs> Your call is important oh, to us. Yes. Please hold As on. much as science is about pursuing the truth, yes, we've created a beast <clears throat> of our own making with AI. Now what do we do? Because obviously you put the, the genies out of the bottle. It can't go back in. Mm. And you're going to be doing more and more research. And there's going to be more and more interactions with that research, with society. And the Lord only knows what journalism AI is going to produce. Um, <laughs> right. And all those other kinds of things. The question now is for us as scientists, how do we navigate it? And actually, this is where I can come back to the copyright thing, because um, journals actually retain the copyrights of the articles that they produce. Mm. Um, and so if an AI is training on a journal article, um, then, yeah, it's going to probably be violations of copyright to the similar degree that it is for um, Midjourney and the lawsuit that they're dealing with. Um, but all of these journals like this one, even even though this has been retracted, mm -hmm. um, you know, this article is going to retain the, the publisher here, Frontiers, is going to retain the copyright for the article um, as well as every other article that they have. So it's it is that kind of thing. So Frontiers I, I and Cell and bio, bio, Developmental Biology, again, a STEM journal. Um, <laughs> I, I wonder, though, I mean. <clears throat> no way I'm defending this, but I think there in, in copyright law, I think there's probably a stronger argument to say that, um, that here's the thing. There's a couple of ways that people are thinking about this, and this is what the law hinges on when it comes to these cases, is so many people are looking at the output as the for the, for the legal vector here. And actually a lot of people are discarding or disregarding the 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 other end of the cycle which is the ingestion the mm. process of just strip mining all of this copyrighted content and that's where the focus should be on not looking at the outputs i think your strongest case is saying look they are basically just like a trawler they're just trawling the ocean floor and just taking everything up not just the species and the things that they want to to find and a lot of the arguments they're putting forward is, firstly, there's no way of finding who owns the work. That's ridiculous. Metadata has existed for so long. Yeah. And it's how any journalist verifies. It's one of the verification process one goes through to work out the source and the provenance of a certain bit of media. It's what I, in, in my process, if any time I create digital media, I'm always putting my metadata in there. And so that exists. Um, in addition to that, the other argument is that, well, for these AI models to be useful, they cannot limit themselves to just public domains, domain work or right. stuff that's out of copyright. I can be more sympathetic to that if you're just, if all things being equal, your plan is to have something that's very dynamic and useful. Yes, you want up-to-date a complete holistic look of information that's got a stronger argument but again that still means that you are for the 
greater good, you are violating individual property rights by stealing work because you believe that your your sort of mission is greater than that that violation. However, a lot of people are focused on the output. Now, the output, whether it be text creation, whether it be the clumps of text that come out of ChatGPT, that again, from what I'm seeing, I think it was between 70 or 80% of the stuff created was plagiarized or was literally just lifted. Or whether it be the image regeneration. Um, I don't call it AI art. It's not art. It's not image creation because the best way I can kind of, you know, explain this to people is it strip mines a lot of copyrighted stuff. It trains on that yep. and it cuts them up into small little things like a collage. And then each of those pieces of the collage <clears throat> are attributed to a tag. And then once the prompt comes in, it goes through its archives of what it's got and pulls the different aspects mm. to recreate this weird hybrid. Mm. There's an argument that, is it transformative? Possibly. I would say that the, um, the, the article usage, if we're just exclusively looking at the output, there could be an argument that it is fair use. But again, that's only at the output end. If yeah. you're looking at the input of where it's strip mining, that in itself, there's no way of getting around that that's copyright theft unless they have gone to each person to get permission. Yeah. Yeah. So there's two ends of the argument here, and one of them is is much more slam dunk than the other. Yeah. And, there, well, there's one related to the copyright thing on the journals. Mm. There's one thing that I don't know whether or not an AI is capable of this at this point mm. because while there is the push toward open access articles mm. that's not universal yet vast majority of um published research is behind paywalls subscription yeah. services for for the journals you either have to be at a university that has a subscription or you have to have a subscription yourself yeah and so i don't know <clears throat> that an ai can get around that which goes to the other problem of training on only a very small portion of the data set at that point right. when you're trying to write an article I would say, I, I know you know this, but just for the audience, that just because something is uh, not demanding money that you use, it does not mean it's free of copyright. Yeah, exactly. So, yes. Yeah. I mean, even if it's open access, it's still a copyright thing. But Precisely. my point is, even though that's even though you have a small chunk that's open access, I don't know if AIs can get around paywalls. No, but I do wonder, and it would be interesting to do a bit of digging as to whether in the terms of service, because this is what we're seeing a lot of the uh, stock image websites that mm. hidden in their terms of service, when you sign up and, and, and give, you are signing a way that your stuff can be used in training models. Yeah. And mm. I would not be surprised, potentially hidden in the terms of service, there might be a thing to say that, you know, Frontier retains the rights to be able to use your you know, for research, they might be creating their own AI. You know, they might be able to be, be creating- The publisher, the, maybe not, but but it might be a question of whether or not the journal would allow another AI researcher to have access to the articles for right. for the purpose of development or training or something like that. But and that's thus, a whole other thing. Yeah, and thus, if it's, if it's done without being in the terms, then it's sub-licensing and that's illegal. If it's done and you've you've ticked something and agreed to it in a small print but not realized, then that's fair game for them to do that. But whether they're then selling that out and that's uh, uh, purchasable by other LLMs, that is another question. Yeah. And that would be interesting. Yeah. But the larger question, you know, being about the pursuit of the truth, mm. the, the historical context of science comes into this, into play with this. Mm. When, this is why I don't like the greater good thing in the social justice part mm. very much so with science is when science has been consumed by the ideology of the day or the time or whatever place it's been in, that's when the most egregious and evil things have happened in the name of science. Yeah, uh, Eugenics, Trofim Lysenko in Soviet Union, the things that scientists did in Nazi Germany, Mao Zedong's China, the list goes on and on and on and on. Yeah. And so now we come at the point with that in terms of what's the ethics with AI and science. And I think think of it immediately in scientific research when you're talking about particularly social sciences and people, mm. because they already have to go through a lot with institutional mm -hmm. review boards and making sure that whenever you have subjects in a social science study, you know, that they're not going to be harmed, that they're going to get some benefit out of it, you know, minimize the risks as much as possible. Yeah. 
Well, now you throw AI into the mix with that. What does that do is a very interesting ethics question um, alongside the larger ethics of how do we deal with this in the publishing side of things, but also in the larger question, we kind of been hinting at it and going around it a little mm-hmm. bit of the, um, you know, the, the pursuit of the truth mm. aspect of it. Well, what if an AI screws it up mm. and how do we use it or mm-hmm. do <clears throat> we use it at all? Because there's also the potential with AI to cheat. We've already talked about it with the production of articles mm-hmm. of text based on AI. So that's the ethics question we have to tackle now, where it's diff- where it's similar to the artistic side of things, because I tend to agree with you with respect to the articles. An AI-generated article, an AI-generated figure, is not the work of that author. No. It's not the work, it's not the unique work of that author at all. Same, th- I've seen AI-generated programming code for analysis too. I'm like, mm, that's not your code. Hmm. That's an artistic form in all of itself to make a beautiful piece of code that works. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, art is just the, you know, is is creation and, uh, you know, it's whatever you want to call art. But yeah, I mean, I was less thinking about it. It's interesting because, you know, I kind of took off the whole idea of, you know, the copyright side of things when we were talking about the, the science thing. I was more going down the attack line of, you know, what it means for truth and the compounding of, of lies. But yeah, I mean, it does. It's It's the same concept that these uh these figures or whatever is being produced by ai is a product of something that was ingested Mm -hmm. and again we don't know whether it was legally done whether it was illegally done but given the fact that the tools out there these people are going to still be using the same tools that have the flaws in them such Mm -hmm. as mid journey or you know open ai and all of these other ones um we know we know how the sausage is made with that we Mm -hmm. know how these things are created and yeah it has the same problems well yeah and i i wasn't wasn't neglecting the other thing because that is as much that is a concern to me too in terms of you know bending of reality and the propagation of the errors and things like that that just says to me all sorts of bad things mm-hmm. are possible mm-hmm. um but i also don't know at this point what are the ethics guardrails that we need to be thinking about with like with specific connotation to that in terms of is it okay to use an ai to do research at all well that's yeah that's another kettle of fish that uh (laughs) i i think i think if the if the algorithms were open source and one could actually because i mean that's a large problem of this you know a lot of these consumer models they're not open source we don't know how they're weighted look at the gemini situation we don't know exactly how they're weighted we are relying on the mixed messages that are coming out of google and i think the only way to put guardrails is seeing that the algorithms are open source and not having these uh ethical conversations with the AI itself, but actually looking at people that are creating them, because that is where that's where they're born from. Mm-hmm. So the people creating these algorithms, if we ensure that these guardrails and limitations are put into place, and we can all see within the al- the open source code for that algorithm that this is how it is weighted and this is the limitations, I think that goes some way. Um, I don't think AI is ever going to be ethical. I don't think Mm. AI can be ethical um, because there are so many, you know, it's that old saying, too many cooks spoil the broth. And I think there's so many That's got to be a Britishism. I've never heard that one before. Oh, you don't? I haven't heard that? Okay, right. Uh, Britishism of the day. Um, (laughs) But but I think that's the thing. There are so many people that AI relies on so many inputs and so many kind of, uh, you know, prodding and poking to create it as to what it is that the idea that it can retain its pure you know essence and have something that also pumps out something that's untainted by biases or the the views of of the person creating it or uh, or touching it having any involvement with it at some point down the line is ludicrous it's impossible 
So while I'm thinking about it, um, folks, we're probably going to wrap up here in the next 15 minutes because I know you have a hard out um, here, so I won't I won't hold you. But um, so if you want to get in your questions here in the last mm. few minutes, uh, that would be great. Um, or if you have thoughts, because I've seen some folks going on in chat. I, I'm sorry, see the whole truth that I have no idea what, <laughs> what you were trying to say before. Um, <laughs> but that, um, but that's the, that's the thing there. So yeah, in the next 15 minutes, we're going to wrap up. So, um, I will let you get in your last bits of questions and I'll make one final plug for a few things in a moment, but so AI can be ethical because they'll just change the definition of what is ethical. And well, this, this is the problem. Um, right. I don't know if an AI has been asked the question of ethics yet, you know, mm. You know, mm. what, what is your ethical, you know, ask an AI, what is its ethical compass? You know, I, I think it's, I think it's down to relativism. Relativism. I think that is its ethical code. I think that, it is. Yeah, that may have been what's coded into it, really. Yeah. I mean, in a way, it kind of has to be in a sense, because it has to be adaptable to whatever the different, uh, because again, it's not, it's not, uh, it's meant to be a universal tool. Mm -hmm. And ethics change depending on, you know, depending on the fields, the region and all of these things and the person using it. And I think it has to be a one size fits all. And again, there isn't a lot of joined up thinking. For example, you can't use AI and talk to it, you know, a week ago and it remembers that conversation. Yeah. So it has to be relative to the situation and the problem that you pose at that specific time. Yeah, well... I mean, some folks have asked some like really, really interesting moral questions of an AI, but, um, yeah. but yeah, and those, yeah. those have been interesting to see. Hello, furball. Um, <laughs> no, I've the never cat heard just, someone the call cat me that just, before. Sorry. <laughs> Cause you looked in the same direction of my camera. <laughs> sorry. No, the cat just walked by over there and I saw her out of the corner of my eyes. Right. said, hello, furball. <laughs> Um, so let's see. You have to use the law against them. For example, I trademark my own name. Now, when the NYPD gives me a ticket with my name on, on it, I sue them for trade. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Tony, you're kind, my kind of guy. I love Clever, this. Clever, dude. <laughs> I mean, Tony does point out, um, and da, 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 where is it? Where is it? Where is it? This is why they want to digitize. Or, uh, sorry, this is why I want to digitize all books. So AI um, can't change history when. And I think there's. See, I I kind of go. I have two things. I think um, here's my own little bit of uh, advice for people. I think having some kind of data source where you have got some of your own like your own library of things i also am a very very strong believer in having physical media physical media yeah physical books physical dvds you know even when i'm gaming i want the physical disc why because one i mean not that you really own anything anymore but once you have that you know we've had stories of games that come out and because you know there's a lot of pressure they push an update and things completely get removed from them. Yep. Films as well. Films get scrubbed. And oh, yeah. you don't you don't understand, you know, the actual original way that it was meant to be put through. So having those books as well, books can't be rewritten once you've got them in your hand. Yep. You yep. know, I'm such a strong advocate with that. Yeah, um, yeah. No, I do the same thing. I mean, that's that's why I keep printing articles when I when I watch yes. them so when they come out, because it's like I know on the digital ones online, they can go back and change things. Um, yeah. yeah. So with that kind of thing, how can the cat know you're talking to her without looking at her? Because she knows my voice <laughs> is the answer to that one. Um, Tony puts as well, if spell check ruins your ability to spell, what is what will AI do to the minds of children? Yes. Yes. This is something that I... I think, unfortunately, we're just going to have to suck it up that come each generation, there's going to be a new technology that yeah. ultimately dumbs them down. And I think it's for, I'm not a parent, but I think it's for us as parents um, and to instill those things. And I think there is still, you know, even now with um, with all of this technology out there, 
there are parents that do take the time to teach their kids how to do this and they they they, they know how to do it mm. um you know it's uh, there are a lot of people that have anxiety over talking on the phone they just because they they're used to just texting um they can't do mental math because they're used to just pulling out their phone and using a calculator um there are so many different things and it's like the spell check yes and i you know i'm i'm gonna be a hypocrite here because yes i do do a lot of those is my mental math as good as it was when i was at school no yeah. because i've been lazy because it's constantly you know efficiency you, th this is this is where spell check fails spectacularly and i'll give you an example mm. with this one in meteorology, there's something called orographic precipitation, which is right. to say it's precipitation that forms because you have a system that's going over the mountains. And so you have a forced rise in condensation that creates rainfall. Okay. Microsoft Word. Actually, do you know the problem that I had because it didn't recognize the word orographic when I was in college? Do you know what it wanted to change it to? What? <laughs> Pornographic. Oh, I love that pornographic <laughs> rainfall. It's my, it's, my, it's my most favorite precipitation uh, out there. This, wow. this is why spell check is a problem, and you should always double check things. Wow, so, it's also colloquially known as uh, gender fluids. <laughs> it's, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's out there, guys. Uh, you but know. Yeah, it's, it's, but to get back to the ethics question, I, I tend to agree with you that I don't think, and particularly as it comes to scientific research, that AI will be perfectly ethical now like i don't have a problem with the idea of using well mostly don't have a problem with the idea mm. of using ai to try and model a physical process if only mm. because we've been doing stuff with models for ages and ages and ages right at this point. so it's and they, it's, they have it's their a tool for us and there's no different yeah. there's no reason why ai should be held to a different standard right but where i do have the problem is when it comes to the point that the ai generates the manuscript Yes. Um, the AI generates the figures, which they're yes. going to have the same copyright issues as the artistic world does because of all the journals. And if journals retain yeah. the copyright on the text and the figures. But what gets me worried is the potential for AI to actually generate the research and the paper itself. So like, let's say you got a table mm -hmm. in a paper that is a bunch of numbers of analysis of like some effect of this thing on this thing over here or something like that. I can see it come to a point where an AI might be able to generate that table. Mm -hmm. um, and that's actual numbers in there. Um, doing Generating the analysis itself as well as the research. That's where I get extremely worried. Because in the name of efficiency, you know, we talked about the thing with the peer review before. You know, just sometimes peer review just fails because you have folks who are so tight for a deadline, they don't have time to review the paper as much as they'd like. So they end up half-assing it. Which... And AI, AI could be the perfect replacement for peer reviewers. AI would do a wonderful job at it. Yes and no. If you, no, I was going to say, if I'm, you completely being sarcastic. Over, okay. Yeah, no, but if you completely <laughs> overlook its inherent flaws, and we yeah. don't want to go down that route. My humor detector is off today. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, yeah, no, but that, that's... That's where I struggle with it because it's just like, I, I agree. And I think based upon the way the journals have been reacting thus far, they share the same thing, that they don't want anything that's AI generated, that they view it as highly unethical scientifically to do that for yeah. just the professional ethics. Um, and they also, you know, are trying to keep pace with it and identify it when it comes into them. Mm. And that is going to be the long-term challenge. Um <clears throat> Yes, Esteban. Yes, yes. I, I think the humor detection is bad. Um, <laughs> but they can't um, they can't necessarily figure it all out yet. They need folks who are AI experts in their own journals at this point to be able to point out, hey, this paper was probably generated by AI. Um, and you know the irony of that? There are people building AIs that are those AI experts to point out. I know. AI. That's the problem. That's and that hurts problem. my brain. That hurts my brain because that's like several layers of inception that just, you know, how do you then unpick the flaws within that? How do you unpick the flaws within the programs that are meant to detect the flaws? 
how do you unpick the flaws within the programs that are meant to detect the flaws within the things that are meant to depict the flaws? I mean, we, we can go spiral with a huge chicken and egg. Exactly. Exactly. And that's you know, what I don't know what we're going to do. And I don't think there's been enough conversation about the ramifications of this in ethics and as much as science is about pursuing the truth yeah one of the one of the things it also does is it informs policy it informs decision making it informs all sorts of things now it can science informs all sorts of things but think about how scary that is when you have ai that does what's called what's called among some in my discipline actionable science the idea behind actionable science is it's not just about pursuing the truth you're also helping to inform policy or a decision being made somewhere okay so what if ai is doing that research look i'm going to tell you now and i know this might be a bit tinfoil for people but i am convinced i am convinced that most governments are run on ai as it is <laughs> i no 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 i mean i i really do believe this i think think about it right in complex situations where there are many variables whether it be you know do we do we conduct this raid do we conduct this attack do we mm. do this i would not be surprised and and we know this as well right that anything on the consumer market is at least 20 years behind what the military application of things yeah. are yeah and that's and actually I, where we started this anyway, because yeah. a lot of this was birthed out of the military stuff of World War II anyway. Precisely. And you think what they've got with it, right? You know, I wouldn't be surprised if they're using these quantum computers to put feed in all of these variables and a lot of the, deci not the decisions, but a lot of these out, out, you know, options being offered up are AI. AI creations of this is the pros and cons, this is the analysis being done. And then it just gets rubber stamped of, okay, this sounds like the best logical thing. And I would not, we got a glimpse of it over the, yep. the coof, right? Yep. We got a glimpse of what that was doing. These governments wholesale signed up to these AI models and we're well, using AI. I'm going to be fair. I don't know if those epidemiological models that they were doing were AI generated themselves. Well, we know that before everything was isolated, they were using AI to fill in the gaps of, of the sequencing. You know, well, before yes, they were even things, yes. yeah. And I mean, in the UK at least, and you know, if the UK, you know, which is well behind the US, the UK was using AIs to to basically use for its modelling of how many extrapolating out how much, you know, death and destruction and things, and that was what policy was being done. Yeah. And so I would not be surprised if a lot of these very complex diplomatic situations are being fed into a model and all of these off options are being offered up. And that is why I, I do think a lot of governance is done by AI. Possibly so, but we also have to remember that AI can't predict when it's something that's not been trained on before. If it's something that the AI can't imagine, that's where that's it's true. not going to be able to react. Um, and in a way, if you think about it the way you're talking about, then the AI is almost a giant model version of the chess pieces fallacy where everybody presumes, you know, this policy is going to be in place and therefore people will act this way. Well, that's not that's going to be government. what happens. That's <laughs> the government though. That's the state in general. <laughs> well, yeah, but I mean, the AI, AI itself could be playing with that. You know, yes, that could yeah, be the way I it's think, playing about when you're talking I, about that kind of policy related thing. I, I do think so. I think it's, uh, you know, not to get too tinfoily, but if we go down that route, I do think that uh, AI is, that AI would be aware of the part that it plays and the people that are using and relying on it are in itself chess pieces for its output. Mm -hmm. um, but I think, you know, talking about the chicken and egg thing, I think we should start asking what comes first, the study or the, the output data. You know, that's what we're going to start asking ourselves. What came first, the study that it was trained on or the study that it creates once the AI writes it itself? Yeah, that's, exactly. That's it right there. But I, yeah. I, since we're getting close to time, I wanted to um, put that up there because Tony is right. AI is scary, um, though I don't think we'll ever quite get to the level of the strong AI that is the dream. Um, there's an old no. saying, there's an old saying, the, um, if the human brain were so simple, we could understand it, we would be so simple, we couldn't understand it. Um, mm. And that's the kind of thing that we're dealing with when we're talking about AI. The human, your, your brain is the most, one of the most powerful supercomputers in the world, although people use it to make some very dumb decisions, but that's a whole <laughs> other thing. <laughs> um, and so that's, that's, that's the way that is, but I saw, yes, I saw. <laughs> 
I know, I know. I heard oh, about that too. Oh my god. <laughs> wow. Come on, man. I... <laughs> I've got a sound effect just for that. Come on, but, man. Um, <laughs> but that's the um that's that's the thing I meant to meant it. And there's one thing you guys should keep in mind with this. There's an old quote, I can't remember who said it, but um it was said back in the when we first developed guided missiles. Um, our scientific power has outrun our spiritual power. We have guided mis missiles and misguided men. And mm. that is the sort of context that we need to think about that. We've created some, something with AI that is scientifically perhaps incredibly powerful. Mm. It's just going to be a question of whether we have enough wisdom to know how to use it and to guide the ethical development and all this other kind of stuff. So yeah. long story short, and notice with this is, of course, beware of what you find on the Internet. <laughs> Because the Lord only knows how much AI generated stuff is. I will around be right doing now. a lot of work around that and teaching people how to discern stuff. So yes. Yes. So actually, yes, and that is a good way to leap off into our closing plug uh, for the <laughs> evening. Um, so if you want to, Kieran is uh, the founder of WokeScreen.com and the host of the Crowdsource podcast. And if you want to become a member of WokeScreen, go over to WokeScreen.com slash join and use my promo code here, Sophia, to get 10% off of your membership. And it gives me a little bit too. So you're supporting me at the same time. I appreciate it. Um, and you get to do all sorts of fun stuff like interact with Kieran and myself on the community calls and in the games night where Kieran apparently can't colonize anything. Um, you know, the British, <laughs> all that eh? jazz. Um, you get access to uh, to folks in here. I think weren't we going to be doing some ask me anything at, at some point with all the cultural people? In the yep. Community? So I am a jack of all trades, master of. No, I'm joking. No, I'm, I I kind <laughs> of do a lot of uh, a lot of stuff. Uh, I wear my photojournalism hat. Um, you know, photography. You know, videography, uh, journalism. All kinds of things. So we're going to be doing, and what fun as well is, uh, I really do believe that uh, you know it's a it's a it's kind of like the prime minister. I'm a first amongst equals, and so I have the platform, and I'm the one out there, and everything like this. But um, each and each one of us brings value to the community, and each one of us has skills that they can share. So we're going to be doing a community AMA where each person is going to Adrian's going to be talking about science and going to be talking about you know her creativity and things I know a lot of other people are going to be talking about their own specialisms yes look at these coasters look at these beautiful these are going to be up on the woke screen merch store which if you yes. are a creative and you become a member of woke screen you can sell in the merch store and get exactly. some or all of the profit from selling in the merch store exactly if you do monthly you get a profit share if you do annually you get 100 percent of the profit after costs taken out and you know we do help you with the marketing we put it up there it's better than etsy we don't censor you it's completely censor free and um and yeah and we'll we're going to be doing workshops creative workshops so if you want any help with things so we're going to be doing that and there's collaboration opportunities there's so much basically just go to wokescreen.com and um and then just just head over there and um and sign up so really really good stuff and yes if you are an annual supporter you can join the affiliate scheme where you get 10 percent commission on every sign up and you can earn up to 140 dollars per sign up so it's one of the best affiliate schemes that we we do so um yeah definitely yeah. definitely and as far as I'm concerned for you guys, um, you, you've been around long enough. You know I've been on Locals for a while. I'm going to be abandoning Locals as it is a clunky piece of garbage. Um, <laughs> so I am going to be um, moving away from Locals and doing some collaborative uh, things with Woke Screen myself under this brand. And so we're working on building that um, here slowly but surely. It's mostly on me because I'm slow. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but t stay tuned for that because there's going to be some interesting things coming soon, both with Rogue Journal Club and some other things that are going to be going on but um i don't have anything else to add unless there's anything you would I, like to plug. i will just say that uh, unfortunately that that link is 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 out of date so it's oh. this one this oh hang on uh let me send it to you in a private chat uh, okay i will put it up there hold on a second me... not wokescreen.com slash join it is wokescreen.com slash culture hyphen warriors yes yes do that, that. And then once Oops, you once you head over there and do that, you can you can get to see exactly what all of the uh, the different perks are, and you can join now and then just insert the code, and it's yep. it's easy as that, easy as that. Yes, so, this is the correct one, by the way. This is the correct one. The wokescreen.com slash culture warriors. Yes. Awesome. All righty. 
I believe that's it. Um, so this was fun. Um, <laughs> I, I really enjoyed this. And, you know, it just goes to show there is so much, there is so much uh, to talk about with AI. And and this isn't, and I, I would just say, and I think I speak for both of us. We here, thank you, Azir. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I think the thing that I will point out that this isn't anti-AI, right? We see utility in it, but it's just trying to look at the pros and cons and the, and the serious implications. Um, but it's not, uh, it's not a case of, you know, don't do AI. It's do AI responsibly and always go into it having a reason as to why you're using it, not the first, the first thing that you do. I feel like you just parodied a, uh, a public service announcement about drinking. Yes. <laughs> Use AI responsibly. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> all right. And with that, I thank you all for watching. Um, as always, you know, if you like this, hit the like button, share the content when it's out. Um, if you're watching on the replay again, thank you very much for coming by. Um, until next time, of course, I'm Adrian, and I hope you all stay curious. Take care, guys. Thanks, Adrian. Thank you.